Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Today we're going to talk about some experimental settings in Cura. Uh, there are five of them specifically I want to go over, and I think each of them have value in different ways, so I want to kind of talk about them, go into uh, pros and cons of each of those five. Before we get started, I did want to point out that these settings are considered experimental in Cura, and they may work most of the time, but there might be instances where you have issues or they might not work the way you think they ought to do, or they might change the way they work between versions. At some point, I expect that most of these settings will be removed from experimental and moved into the main settings, but they're not there yet. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to the computer. I'm gonna start going over those five settings. Uh, if you have any questions along the way or would like to see any other videos, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. It'll really help this channel grow. Thank you. All right, we're here at the computer and I've got a base model here just using the standard Baby Yoda model. And the first experimental setting I wanna go over is uh, going to be Draft Shield. You'll find it right under experimental settings. Uh, what that does basically, if you're in an environment where it can be kind of drafty or you might have a lot of um, like fans going or AC running or something like that and you're trying to block the air from getting to the print itself, uh, it creates an essential wall around it and it blocks the air coming to it so that if there are gonna be any impacts on the print, those impacts happen on that shield. Uh, I've used this when I was trying to print in the garage a couple times with the door open. It also works pretty well if you're printing next to AC vents or anything like that on larger parts as well. It kind of prevents that bowing that you might get on one of the sides if it cools too quick. Um, that bowing will just end up being on the draft shield, not the actual part. Uh, but let's take a look at it really quick. Um, if we go over to preview you'll see that it's basically creating a shield around the actual object. Uh, you can change the distance from the object to the, the shield itself. Uh, the default is 10 millimeters, um, and that tends to be fine, uh, but you can make adjustments there as well. But if you're looking at it while you're printing, uh, if any drafts or any type of wind was to come towards the print, it would be blocked by this and impact of that instead of impacting your print itself. I would still try to avoid putting your printer by drafty areas, uh, but if there is a little bit of a draft, uh, this can help. The downside is you are going to use more filament and it adds to the print time. So right now you're we're at what, 68 grams of filament, 10 hours and 8 minutes on the print time. If I remove it, we got 8 hours and 7 minutes on the print time and 55 grams of filament. So it is a pretty substantial difference. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you're trying to use it. But I am trying to show you some of the experimental settings that will provide value in some scenarios, uh, but aren't commonly brought up in a lot of other videos. Alright, so let's go on to the next one. So if you look here, the standard skin, let me zoom in a little bit here is just pretty much your layer and that's fine if you're trying to get like a smooth print or something like that uh, the next one's more of kind of a fun thing it's called fuzzy skin you just enable it here and uh, let me show you what it looks like it basically adds a lot of texture to the print itself so if you're not going for like a smooth wall type look and you want it to be more textured uh, this is just a fun one. It doesn't add much filament because it's pretty much going to be doing the same thing. It's just adding a little bit of lines on the outside, uh, but it will add a little bit of time to the print, but typically not by much, maybe like an hour or so. Uh, but here, that's what it looks like with the fuzzy skin. If we get up close here, you can see on the wall, it's just kind of adding just a lot of texture and I did print one of these I was going to show it in this video um, but my kids got a hold of it and I can't find it um, but it really added a lot to the print so if you're printing action figures and stuff like that and you're just trying to make it stand out a little bit more it's a neat little setting that might be worth considering playing around with the next one I wanted to go over here is adaptive layers it is enabled if you're using dynamic quality but it's still considered experimental so I think they're going to be moving it out pretty soon um, but basically what it's doing is let me slice it really quick it's going to be using thicker lines and layers on more of the flat surfaces 
and then going down to smaller layers as you go into more of your detailed or your uh, textured or rounded surfaces. And basically what it ends up doing is giving you a print that looks like it was printed at a higher resolution uh, most of the time uh, while reducing the amount of filament and sometimes the amount of time. Uh, though it is worth playing around with because not all models end up giving you the same results. So it's hit or miss on whether it's worth using or not. Uh, here, let me show you. Um, on when it's If you're using the dynamic quality, uh, use adaptive layers here is already enabled. And it kind of gives you a couple of the default settings. But if we switch over to standard quality as an example and enable adaptive layers, it gives us more options that you don't see when you're using the dynamic quality. And this is basically the variation uh, on your layer thickness. So, and you can have a variance of uh, 0.04 millimeters uh, from each individual layer and from the uh, actual thickest layer to the thinnest layer. So those settings are adjustable and can have a pretty significant impact on the print itself, but it does give you options. I have used it a couple times on prints like where it had a large flat base and then had more texture going up, similar to this, uh, but this base is uh, not exactly straight or flat because you have the lettering. Uh, if this didn't have the lettering, it would be a better uh, option for this type of print, but it does, so it's, again, not necessarily the best. But that's why I always recommend that you look into preview mode and check some of the settings as you're going before you actually just make a decision on which way to go. I tend to always uh, slice it, then go over to preview and make sure that it's doing what I want it to do and look to see if there's any large variances from default settings uh, to what the actual estimated print time is with my setting changes to see if it makes sense or if it's worth just going back to my default profile. All right, the next one I wanted to go over here is conical supports. I changed the model to better represent uh, what it does, kind of show it a little bit better. Uh, you have to have supports enabled unless you're not going to be able to see it under experimental. And if you have tree supports enabled, you won't be able to see it either. But with supports enabled, you can go down to enable conical support. And then you can change the angle and stuff, which will impact how it actually uh, creates the supports. But let me slice this and show you what it does. Uh, I did a video covering supports, I think it was last week. I'll link to that in the description below. I go over this in a bit more detail in that video. Uh, so if you're interested in hearing more or learning more about it, check out that. All right, so let's jump over to preview here. I'm going to go down to layer one. You can see it's creating the base of the support. Then it's going to keep it at that height going up and then slightly angle it out more and more and more until it gets to the top. And then it's going to create the support. So what it ends up being is you've got the structure of the support kind of almost like a reverse triangle uh, where it's putting less support on the ground and then only putting the actual supports where it needs it. Uh, you can change that angle more. Like if I change this to 60, it's going to be a bit more dramatic on that angle towards the top and use less filament. Uh, so it makes sense to play around with what you're trying to do. But like, so you can, it's not touching the build plate as much here. And then it's going up and then that angle going out is steeper, uh, but it's still doing the same thing. Uh, so for large flat surfaces like this, where you have something that's underneath and open, uh, using conical supports is probably the best option. Uh, I typically go to tree supports in most cases, but um, if I'm using anything like this where it has that large flat surface at the bottom, I think conical supports is pretty cool. I do think that they'll end up moving this out of uh, experimental pretty soon. It's been in there for a little bit, uh, but it's hard to say for sure. All right, the last one I wanted to go over isn't under experimental, it's under special, uh, but it's pretty neat. Uh, it's the mold feature, so it basically creates a re reserve or reverse of the object. Uh, it does use a little bit more filament because it's bigger because the actual object mold is going to be the size of the original object. Uh, but if we slice this, it creates a mold pattern where if, once it's printed, if you were to turn this over and dump in like resin or something like that, you'll get that output where it looks like it was an actual print 
um, it's really cool if you're trying to do any type of like jewelry making and that kind of stuff where you're using a lot of molds and resin and um, other type of molding equipment uh, but I did want to make a note there you've got to make sure that it's an object that can actually come out so here it's going to create the opening there for the mold which is fine uh, but when you get to the top with how it's creating this shell there's going to be no way to actually get this one out without breaking the outside mold so it doesn't quite work um, let me just drop a box in as an example here all right so here's a 40 millimeter box uh, just basically the 20 by 20 uh, scaled at 200 percent and it creates the outside shell and in this case it does have a top or a bottom because it's kind of giving you that flat surface but if you were to put the resin in here you'd be able to pop that out without having to break the mold so that way it's reusable if you're printing a mold for something most of the time you're going to want it to be reusable uh, so just make sure that you are going through that preview to make sure you can get that print out without breaking it i've done a couple before where I was using resin and I wasn't quite paying attention and it had a support cross in the middle and I couldn't get the resin out without breaking the mold. I was kind of annoyed, um, but that's especially true of something like the action figures and stuff like that. So really keep that in mind when you're looking at it. Out of the box, it does a decent job trying to think about what the mold should look like and there are a couple options around it. Um, you can do surface, normal, or whatever the case may be, but it does not work with every model or you might have to make adjustments to the model to make it work. So just keep that in mind going into it. All right, guys, so those are the five experimental settings in Cura that I've been playing around with lately. I think they're all pretty neat in their own way, and I hope they all end up making their way into the main product or at least not getting uh, deprecated. If there are any other ones that you feel are worth adding to this list or would like to see a video on, you can go ahead and leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if there are any other videos you guys would like to see or have any other feedback, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thank you.